You know, for the past week, it's been triple digits here in Arizona. Grizz and I get up early every day for our morning walks. Oh, buddy. On the way, he lets me stop at the gym and get my little workout on. The nice part is that there's nobody there and we pretty much got the whole place to ourselves. You're a big help, huh? After the exercises, we head over to the Grand Ballroom where we work on his sit stays and his recalls. What a great little guy. Grizzy, come. He's a good boy. He's such a good boy. Yes, you are. Now, back by the pool, he really loves to check out the water features. Good boy. Is that good? What do you think, buddy? And we're headed back to the RV before the sun can turn the sidewalks and the uh, streets into frying pans. Whoa! Whoa, Whoa it's cooking! <laughs> you know, this, probably the majority of the parks here in the Valley of the Sun, really thin out this time of year. I mean, what kind of fool would stay here in this kind of heat? I guess that's me. I mean, just look, over 270 spaces and maybe not more than about 20 campers. This brings up another point. RV ownership usually means that you're constantly fixing and upgrading your beautiful chariot. We definitely are. The problem here is, is that come late morning, Unless you're extremely fit and acclimated to the heat, of which I'm neither. I'm working on it though. Doing things not in the AC is pretty limited. As of late, we've noticed that services tended to be a little bit slower. Lots of spooling and unable to support us both online. One thing though, we've had a connectivity solution that we have updated and improved pretty much since we started. From our phones to our hotspots and later to uh, Pepwave Max uh, BR1 4G LTE. That's BR549 and hold down the collect cold. I'm no rocket feller, you know. Which is our latest and has served us well. We've eyed Starlink for years but weren't quite sold on its reliability, outages, or the initial exorbitant cost. Not that long ago, their price came down to within the range we're paying for our older system. And some of our friends and followers have been honest to just try Starlink. Seems they even offer a 30-day free trial. If we don't like it, just return it. We took the plunge. After all, it had to be faster than our 9 megabytes down and 2 megabytes up speeds, right? A couple of weeks later, and it's here. We put the dishy on its kickstand on the ground and pointed it at the northern sky. Ran the cable, it's like a Cat6 shielded ethernet cable, threw a slide out, set the router and power pack on the breakfast bar and plugged it in. About five minutes of baited anticipation and wow. I mean, wow. I ran a quick speed test. You ready for this? over 300 megabytes down and 20 megabytes up. That's unreal. Okay, for now we're hooked. I didn't want to leave Dishy on the ground. I was afraid somebody had snagged the cable and uh, 
rip it out or step on it or maybe just walk off with it. So we had an old Harbor Freight telescoping flagpole. So I ordered the adapter from Starlink and a flagpole buddy in the two inch size for our RV's ladder to mount the pole on. I found a gland from Furion, a small one, and a couple of shielded double female pass-throughs. A metal switch plate with a perfect hole in it for inside the RV. I put one in the wet bay, that's the Furion, and the other in the hall cabinet where the pep wave is. Connected them with a 20-foot pre-made shielded Cat 6 cable through the basement and behind the fireplace. I ordered a mount slash organizer from Amazon for the router and power pack. Put them on a one quarter inch piece of ply cut to fit the inside of the cabinet. I had already wired both 110 and 12 volt outlets to the cabinet for the pep wave and our blink system. Removed the bottom two sections of the flagpole leaving more than enough when extended to get dishy above the roof. Attached dishy to its adapter then the pole put the flagpole buddy on the ladder, then extended the pole and set it in the holder. I had modified the pole by using a large step drill to open up the rubber end pieces on the pole section so as to run the cat wire from dishy down through the middle of the pole. I also augured out the little plastic thing on the end of the flagpole so that the mount would fit into the top. Ran the remaining wire to the wet bay and up from the hose access to the fitting we'd added there. Double checked to see that Dishy was pointed north, went back inside and plugged the router and power pack into the other gland and the pack into an open 110 socket. Five minutes later and wow again, this is really nice. Now buy yourself a Lowe's 15 gallon tote. It's about $17 with a snap-on yellow top. Use it to store your Dishy in for travel. This is the Gen 3 Starlink Roam setup, and this dish is larger than the one that's a Gen 2, so the old red Husky box won't work. Our pole fits back where we had been storing it in our rear slide-out tray. Little side note, the Roam program allows you to turn off your service if you're not going to be using it for a month or more. Another big savings possibility. So far, we're happy. We are in a large metropolitan area and have had no issues with speed. We'll keep you posted. Now, like I said, in an RV, there's always something to maintain or fix, right? Sometimes you just don't realize it because you haven't looked in an area for a while. No need, right? Well, when I was running the Cat 6 through the basement, I found this. We are moving again Friday and I need to order the parts this week. So I'll have them when I open it up. I want to be sure to have everything I need because we'll be without water while I work on it. There's always something. Please, travel safe.